Hey squaddies, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening whenever you're listening or watching. Hello. Be sure to check out memberships. You can join if you're interested. You'll be in a company of equally amazing squaddies. <laughs> and just like with all my information, I'll put the links inside the description box. Thanks. And a huge shout out to Mama Jean on a super thanks, as well as fellow Squatty channel, Love Wins Movement on the shout out. I really appreciate your support and I support all Sussex friendly channels as well. And especially if their names are Deanna, like my name. So, hey, Deanna, <laughs> thanks for the support. And you and Mama Jean, may your days be filled with blue skies, sunshines with positive vibes. Princess Megan was by her hubby, Prince Harry's side, as he traveled to Florida to compete in a charity polo match that benefited his Sensabale organization. The Duchess of Sussex wore a beautiful Heidi Merrick white halter dress and sunglasses as she accompanied her hubby to the Friday, April 12th event. The look featured a crisis cross construction with a cutout at the bodice that falls into a pleated skirt. She completed the outfit with Aquazura stiletto heels, vintage Chanel gold earrings, and a Valentino bag, styling her hair into a classic low bun. And she looked stunning. <laughs> Meanwhile, Prince Harry looked springtime chic in a tan linen blazer, light blue button up shirt, and a pair of white denim jeans. Baby, let me write it a snake with my venom. Denim on, denim on, denim on, denim. Shout out to Beyonce and Post Malone's for that amazing song, Levi James, that's featured on Cowboy Carter right now. And that line, I would never say to Prince Harry. That's the line Megan would most likely say to him. So, there you go. <laughs> Anywho, the Fab Four, which is, you know, Harry, Megan, Noxiel, and Dalfina. They all posed briefly for the photos on the red carpet before making their way to the green where they were all smiles walking hand in hand. Princess Meghan's appearance on Friday's match served as a sign of support for hubby Prince Harry, who co-founded Sensa Ballet in 2006 with Prince Cecil of Lesotho. The charity offers support for children and young people in Lesotho and Botswana, including healthcare, education, vocational training, and more. Prince Harry recently spoke in a panel in Miami and recently spoke what Sensabale means to him. Africa is Africa's in my heart, Africa's in my soul. Um, I first went there when I was 12, 13 years old and after so many years I wanted to give back to it because it had given me so much. Um, the vast open space, the cultures, the communities, the people, the, the wildlife, just the, the freedom um, was, a, was a huge piece uh, of why I loved Africa so much. And we call it Sentabali. In Sasutu, the local language, it means forget me not. And it's really focused on ensuring that the younger generation are quite literally not forgotten. Um, both Princeso's mother and my mother had a, a strong focus on HIV and AIDS, but also of the younger generation because it's their futures that are being stolen from them. And at the heart of Sentabali, what we've always believed is that every single young person should have a chance at a better future. And it was so wonderful to see them alongside their besties, Nacho and Dalfina. And did y'all catch that beautiful picture of Megan and Dalfina holding hands? I love that. It's so beautiful. And we got to see photos of her other bestie, the beautiful Serena Williams and her hubby. Just beautiful and amazing. <laughs> The Duke of Sussex took part in the Royal Salute Polo Challenge at the Grand Champions Polo Club in Wellington this past Friday on April 12th. And they looked absolutely stunning, as I mentioned before. I I know that in my community tab, I call Harry and Megan mom and dad. And that's not just me saying, oh, mom and dad. Like, that's that's like a, um, like a, a term of respect. Um, I respect their... I, I love their love, okay, and I respect their work ethic. I respect their their um, dedication and passion for a universal service. I respect and love them for being very, 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 very amazingly good people. Like you can tell who are good people just by just not just by their actions, but just by their vibes. To me. Um, and yeah, and I, I'm, I absolutely love it. And um, and now um, and now listen as I try my best to segue to actually related 
news regarding this amazing oh my gosh it's, it's just so amazing just seeing just harry megan um Nacho and dalfina and then they're you know hugging their their beautiful children her daughter was there um dalfina and Nacho's daughter and i i just i love it I'm just so happy right now and i don't know if because of the beautiful beautiful uh weather that we're having today um i mean if you're having bad weather i'm sorry but hopefully i bring some of this beautiful weather that i'm in right now i'm in illinois in rural illinois uh beautiful big sunshine beautiful warm spring air just bring it over to you you could just feel happy and just at peace and just enjoy enjoy this podcast i really hope you do now moving on <laughs> Princess Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, has said two new unscripted series at Netflix via her and Prince Harry's Archwell Productions banner, which is under an overall deal with the streamer. Those titles and release dates are not yet to be announced. Both projects are currently in early development. The first series will be curated by the Duchess of Sussex and will celebrate the joys of cooking, gardening, entertaining, and friendship, per an official description. The second, primarily shot at the U.S. Open Polo Championship in Wellington, Florida, will provide viewers unprecedented access to the world of professional polo. Known primarily for its aesthetic and social scene, the series will pull the curtain back on the grit and passion of the sport, capturing players and all it takes to compete at the highest levels. Harry and Meghan are also executive producers of the project as well. Archwell has previously produced three series for Netflix, of course, with their docuseries Harry and Meghan, and as well as The Heart of Invictus and Live to Lead. It's really, really awesome. Looking forward to that much. Really, like the, I mean, I'm excited for all the projects, but I'm mostly excited um, for the first project that was announced, which was to celebrate the joys of cooking, gardening, entertaining, and friendship. Like, I really, really love that, and I really look forward to seeing this. Like. I wonder what the name of these projects are. I mean, I know that they don't have a name for either, but I'm sure they have some ideas of like which title would be the best. So this is really, really cool. <laughs> and I also, I guess like after, you know, doing some research, after seeing like beautiful posts from fellow squaddies on Twitter regarding the polo, uh, like documentary of the polo, uh, so we put the polo project on netflix i've seen like um the mentioning like african-americans or just or black people in general from around the world not just african-americans who also participate in polo as well uh the beautiful diversifying way of life because in reality in human reality of uh, we are human but we all come in different shades and you know and whatnot and um are in, in spaces you know like polo or uh or country music in general even though country music was founded or um created from black people but like i mean well my point is um it shouldn't be just excluded to just you know wealthy white men a lot of these uh spaces it's like like polo for instance and i I read and seen so many beautiful posts on on Twitter, and then I also uh, did some research additional to that, and I've seen like uh, TikTok TikTok uh, videos, and and um, there's this one girl that I've found out. Um, I'm like, oh my gosh! Like her name is Soraya Harris. She's she's uh, she became the first Black woman to compete in the U.S. Open Women's or Women's Polo Championships, which is really really cool um i read an article about it and she's like she's 25 years old and she grew up in um upper darby and learned how to ride horses and play polo through a program at work and ride in philadelphia shout out to philly <laughs> uh, harris continued playing throughout college at cornell university and in national and international professional tournaments so that's wonderful for her and i'm not going to been too much time talking about this but because i want to talk about it in another podcast in the future but like i said like it's just wonderful to uh see a, a diverse uh 
a diverse window of of people who are interested in things like you know in, like polo i always thought polo was pretty was pretty cool but i i never really thought about like you know other people aside like you know wealthy white men <laughs> you know for taking in it so uh yeah the squaddies once again opened my eyes and educated me uh on on this particular matter which i truly truly appreciate i love learning and i love you know being like oh my god i was eight years old when i found out that this you know so so i mean there are some historical things where you know you feel sad about like oh wow like i wish that we would have learned about this in school You're like you know historical things but you know social media once again wins with uh win with you know teaching other people so love that i'm going to keep this podcast short and sweet so uh, I actually got uh, four wisdom teeth taken out, so that's why you probably <laughs> that's why you probably haven't been seeing me at all. I haven't posted a podcast last week, which I really wanted to, but my jaws were so sore I could not talk. I, all I could do was just eat applesauce and mashed potatoes and ice cream <laughs> and um, delicious protein shakes. So I couldn't really do anything. Like even if I try, I, mean, pro- I probably would have been so like. Rrr, 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 rrr. So, yeah, your girl, yeah. <laughs> now the procedure itself wasn't so bad. Uh, the shots, yeah, I-, I was awake during the whole time. So like I-, I got like four, not four, but like I got in- I got shots on um, um, all sides of my of my mouth. Um, then the inside, I was really interesting. And my doctor, my surgeon, he's an amazing amazing uh dental surgeon chicago based but he came to my little rural town to take care of that in illinois <laughs> um and uh, he's really cool he's from ghana and he had like some really cool music playing in the background like he was doing his little dance it was so bizarre but it was you know it was, it was interesting like he was he pulled my wisdom teeth out the last one at the bottom uh left side yeah that one was like a little tricky one but it took him about 30 seconds to get that out too so <laughs> tmi on that yeah and i look like a chipmunk for about a week now my face is better you can't see my face <laughs> obviously but yeah I'm, I'm doing quite well the pain medicines were working so i have i was not suffering i was just i just couldn't talk like i mean i could talk but i couldn't really move my jaws they were so sore they really were but we are going to get to the what for Rose skits. How about that? With their fan fiction. Oh my gosh. They're, they're, they're UK people that's, you know, going left and right, announcing that they're stepping down, they're announcing that they're jobless. But hey, DM me if, DM me if you can, if it, for jobs. Yeah, okay. So let's go see what these entitled nut jobs are up to now. So hit it, horse miller. This podcast was sponsored by Hermist. Where the breeze will lead you into the lap of your very own married middle-aged father of two. Buy it at your local staff forum or at an available Amazon storefront today. So this peasant from the States knows all about hair. Yes, darling. My cousin's different fiancé swears on it. Her people use it for their hair growth, skin care, and... Who cares about that? When will she be coming in? About now. Oh, there she is. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hmm. Okay. Yes, well, I was told you have some hair growth oils. I most certainly do. You do know that I'm the heir to the throne. I'm well aware. Then you should be aware of the appropriate protocol to curtsy. You American women are all the same. Darling, please remember that Mara is all guest and here to help you with your hair. Issue. I'm sure you're aware of the online harassment I had to endure. Being called Bordylocks, Baldwin, Egghead. I need a makeover. I'm no musician, but we'll see what I can do. I need you to turn on my screen and have you look at possible styles that may be a good fit for you. Okay. And just to let you know, between my brother and myself, I'm the cool one. 
Note it. Now let's take a look at the screen. There are a number of hairstyles. All these dreadlocks. I look like one of those rappers. You freak chose the styles. I want to look youthful and relatable. So I'm also bringing my sons along to the game. Oh, you're going to a game later today. Precisely. Oh, that's nice. George and Louie, right? Um, what are you doing in my office? And who is this woman? None of your concern. It's under my roof. Hello, how are you? I'm Myra. American. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Myra. Tampon, baby. <laughs> Harry and Meghan announced that they will be releasing two projects via Netflix. If you can get that lazy bomb air of yours to do so. Oh, hello, William, Rose, and who are you again? I'm Myra, William's hairstylist. What hair? Oh, oh, oh. oh shut up. And what do we have here? I always thought you looked good in locks. <laughs> oh, shut up, both of you. Perhaps the hairstyle will have William set up for settlement meetings at the Brandon Pops with Carol Middleton. Will you attend on getting the woman boosted up for a less settlement arrangement? That's none of your concern. If he grew on his beard, he'd make somewhat of a appealing handsome man. If you cover your face, then perhaps some people wouldn't have to look at that monstrosity. Watch it, boy. Mara. Yes. Do you know Megan? Megan? Yes. Prince Harry's wife. Who's... Who's also related to me. I am her father-in-law, and Harry's my son. Oh, well, I mean, I know of, of her, but not personally. I thought you people all knew one another. Stop talking, Camilla, darling. Sarah Rose, do you really think I would look better with a beard? I already find you handsome. More handsome than Harold? Hmm. Much more handsome. Add on a slight tan and teeth whiteners and you'll be good. Much more than Harold? Um, sure. Then we should begin my transformation. I want dreadlocks. Yes, you will be getting, but in someone else's office. Now, all of you, out of my office, at once. And that's all for this podcast. And be sure to check out my Amazon storefront. In the meantime, I hope that your days are filled with blue skies, sunshines, with positive vibes. I'd like to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell. Also, join a membership. I have the links inside the description box. My name is Deanna, and you are watching Thriving with the Sessicists. Talk to you soon.